And you have found the Quiet Please Golf Podcast. I'm Alan DePew, your host, and as always, joined by my panel, my left, Bourbon Bob, formerly known as Boston Bob Baldessari. Coming to you live from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. My lower left, uh, the little, Mr. Little Linkster and noted author, Brendan Elliott. Good evening. And I save him to last because he's the prettiest. Thristian Nazamus, back in the house. Where's Greg? Can't find him. <laughs> Where's Andy? Funny you say that. Funny you say that as well. Of all the weeks that Andy Hydorn does not make it, of all the weeks we were expecting him to lean in, and maybe it's a safety issue. Just saying. This is well, the week he misses. In all truth, folks, here's the deal. We had scheduled guests in light. We're recording Wednesday night. We're going to push this thing live immediately. We did have a scheduled guest. We've asked, to, asked that guest if we could reschedule that for another time in light of everything that's been going on in the last 48 hours. I will preference by saying the four of us are reaching out to everyone that we have in our networks to find out as many details as possible. But here's the reality. Nobody knows anything. Nope. There's a lot of subjective information out there, but what we do know is Greg Norman may or may not be on our podcast in the future. <laughs> and we have merged with golf talk live and are looking for something on the Looney Tunes channel. So, That's right. I mean, the KW, excuse me. Any, I, I can't remember. You other two missed last week. I did want to bring this up to you. We do have rules now on the new Quiet Please Golf podcast that we did not okay. formally have under on our, under our on structure. Okay. If you get out of hand, Christian, <laughs> quiet please. Okay. So here He's we gonna... go, folks. Because I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I literally am walking through the golf shop and CNBC pops up and I read the, the, the trailer on the bottom and I said, what the F? Raw motion, next 45, 50 minutes. Bobby, I give it to you, Mr. Historian. Can you believe we are, we're at this day one year later? Speechless. I mean, I was like you in my golf shop and golfers started walking in saying, did you see the news about this merger? I said, Titleist and Callaway? Like, what? <laughs> and then the word get out, get out. I will say that every golfer that came in unequivocally, I know that's a strong statement, but I've yet to talk to probably about 20 of the members, 20 of the golfers at the club I'm at. And everything I've seen online, I'd say 95 and 98% has not been in favor of this. The tour has been getting hammered. Jay Monahan has been getting hammered. I mean, it's a strange, dark day in many regards for the game, for the for the PGA Tour, not the game of golf, the people that play the game, that love the game, that get up Saturday morning, play scrambles and do the breakfast ball and hit another breakfast ball. And the love of the game in that regard, I think, is is there. But there's a lot of questions going on about the what the tour has done. And, and it's clear the tour, the, the tour wanted to have this happen. I think the specter of the lawsuit and in that legal jargon discovery was going to open up a major can of worms, skeletons in the closet that you can't even believe. We're going to, we're going to, and, and let's, we're going to just throw all the speculations out there. Brendan, before I come to you, the, one of the, one of the quotes that I saw last night, and then I saw it on Twitter, Johnson Wagner in the, in the uh, players meeting estimated a negative positive split, Bobby, to your point, 90, 10 negative. Yeah to positive in the player meeting, including a standing ovation when the room when when someone in the room called for a new tour leadership. Mr. Elliot, what was your first reaction and how do you react to that? I saw somebody post on social that they had to check the calendar that, that it was April 1st. And that was kind of the feeling of like, no, like somebody's putting out there, one of these social channels is putting out one of those April 1st or April Fool's Day type of things. And then I popped on all the news channels, golf channel, and like blindsided, you know, that's just the feeling that, and you got to feel for the players. Like you could see Rory in his, in his presser today. 
trying to be very careful and calculated about how he said things and what he said. But I think those are the guys that have been screwed the most by this. And we'll see. We'll see what happens long term. He did. Roy did make some points, which I know we'll touch on about some of the jargon that's being thrown out there by the media mergers. One of the words he kept talking about. And it's too soon to say, Alan, like you said, about what what everything is going to, how it's going to come together and what it's going to, what this is going to be. But it was probably, I, I texted two of my buddies, Rex Hoggard and Jay Coffin, media guys. And they said this is probably the most significant development in the history of the game. Um, and I, a professional game. And I, I agree with that. I have to agree with that. Well, as one social media post, basically Saudi Arabia just bought professional golf. Yeah. Christian, your reaction? Um, I was definitely, um, I guess I was surprised very much, but also not surprised at the same token because, um, I mean, look, you, if you're in Jay Monahan's shoes, like, you know, it's, I don't know how you go from saying a couple of years ago, all the negativity about live and how much people just hate it. And, and you're banning players. And, and now you're basically saying now that like, you know, we're merging with them. Um, from what I've understood from the information that I have received on this is that the PGA is the, is the kind of like the main foundation of the, these tours coming together, meaning that like they make the decisions on, um, payment and, and so forth. Um, I could be totally wrong. I've read that across a couple different sites. Um, but I guess they still have the main control on, on certain players. I mean, R Rory touched upon it today when it came to other guys that are on live bigger names, like take, take Bryson and, and all of them that if they want to come back on tour, they're gonna have to pay a fine for it. You know what I mean? Which I agree with. I don't think they, you can't just open these guys up with open arms and say, Oh, well, nothing happened. But then Rory also says that he still hates live. <laughs> he thinks that it's going to grow the game of golf. And that kind of confused me a little bit because I'm just like, live is nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's not even a comparison to the DP world tour. And it's not even comparable to the PGA. The only difference is that the Saudis just have money shitting out of their ass all the time. They, they, they you know, they can shit out a million dollars in an hour. And that's the main reason I think why they did this, if I'm being honest. And, and I, I could be wrong when I say that, but I I don't know. I'm just, I'm not happy with it. I wouldn't be shocked if certain people boycott on the PGA tour right now that like not playing tournaments moving forward because they're so ticked. But so, go ahead, finish, finish. Yeah, I'm, saying, no, I'm, I'm, give, no, I'm giving you that. I'm just yet. <laughs> going off, going off BE's point. It's like, yeah, if I'm Rory, if I'm John Rahm, if I'm JT, I'm pissed. I'm pissed okay, off. Now, now you're getting the paddle. Okay. So <laughs> each of you have touched on a various point that I think we need to expand on. What we know today. Significant to me was the first, very first thing I hear. They are forming. Th this is not. Everybody's talking about the merger of Live and the PGA Tour. That's not the case. The PGA Tour, the entity known as the PGA Tour, is forming a new and this is key, for-profit entity with the public fund and the DP tour. And they're still going to have their not-for-profit because they're going to, because they're going to have to want to funnel money to charities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Live may exist, may not exist. If you believe Greg Norman in his rally to his troops today, oh, we've made great strides. We're going to keep going. Things are going on. Are, is live not going to be nothing more than the exhibition slash feeder tour to this new super tour? What do we truly know as far as the, let's talk about the structure, Bobby. Yeah. Well, the, if you read, it, see the tweet, I think it was Senator Chris uh, Murphy, yep. Connecticut about the tour player, the tour the executives were in his office a year ago saying there's no way we can let, the Saudi Arabia entity control of major sports entity in the United States. So that's what's happening. The, the live, I agree. I think is the PGA tour we're going to be January to August or a portion of the, uh, the year. And then years ago for Christian's age, there used to be a thing called the silly season. It was in the fall. 
That's when the Skins game started. So is that going to be live silly season in the fall renamed? I don't know. Rory was talking about potentially team uh, groups of teams. You know, who knows? Um, but I agree that uh, whatever they want, the DP World Tour was on its lifeline. They were probably on right. uh, in the ICU unit. So mm -hmm. they, they they now can exist with some money. And But at the end of the day, it's the Saudi Arabia, the, the prince and those uh, uh, people out there are going to run the tour. They're going to run men's professional golf is what it comes down to. And then the tour policy board, Ed Hurley, I read an article from Sally Jenkins in the Washington Post today, and it's interesting. He's the head of the tour policy board. He's involved in this. His law firm did the brokering of this merger. That's what they do. So he's making money on both ends, which was a really fascinating. If you can read the Sally Jenkins article today in the Post, really fascinating. Brendan? So when the dust settles, because there's still a lot of questions that are up in the air and there's probably some, you know, they try to to get out of the legality issues that existed. That's going to pop back up because you, you go from accusations of a mon monopoly on the part of the PGA Tour, which they claim they're not. And then you create something an entity that is even <laughs> more so. Of it's a, a, monopoly. a monopoly on steroids. So I don't know how that's ever going to fly. And I did hear something right before we came on. I was watching CNBC or one of the business channels about this is the first uh, first time that the Saudis, you know, they've had their hand in, in Formula One and some stuff with WWE. They never did purchase WWE. but um, And then obviously what's happening in soccer. Um, but this is the first time in the U.S. that they've, Ponied up the money to have a share of the rights of professional sports in the United States. So there's going to be a lot of backlash that goes way beyond sports, way beyond golf. It's going to get so, very political. So I texted in our little group text this afternoon. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I actually agreed with some points that Brandel made last night on Golf Channel. Did I not? I actually admitted that. Yep. And one of them was just that. And, and it was either you, B, or Bob. The, the, it's all about the litigation. Mm -hmm. This entire yep. thing is about litigation. Has to be. Yep. 100%. I mean, it is about, and this, all right, let's, come on, let's get, let's get rolled up the sleeves and get into this. The, the PGA Tour was going to be questioned about all their relationships with XYZ company, ABC company, and their ties to possibly with the Saudi Arabia. And how they do in business with them, but they can't do other business. They're going to be tied to about this monopoly and whether they're not a monopoly. And then, the, of course, then the PGA Tour has now asked to depose the governor as well as everybody else under the sun for, on their yeah. side. So this is 110. I actually think Liv was on the ropes. I really do. They were. Um, although a rumor, a rumor was and it just broke literally hours before we hit record, is that John Rahm was in deep conversations with going over to Liv. So, hmm. Interesting. my question, Mr. Nazemus, my question to you is, is it a super monopoly? And, and how, could it, how could it not be now? I don't know how it can't be, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't know how it can't be. Do you know what I mean? Like, First off, that that kind of shocks me about Rom go, like being in deep talks with them. That that does shock me very much because rumored. rumored. Okay, rumored. If, it, if it's confirmed to be a rumor, which we will never know. If it's confirmed, that shocks me personally a lot. In, fact, in, fact, in fact, in fact, the, the the source that on on Twitter that po posted that said something something effective. That's why they had to expedite the uh, agreement. Well, it's an interesting Rory today said he never was approached and everybody thought he was approached for big money. But you never know. Oh, well, we're going to get into the money in a minute because I'm passionate. I, I, I will agree on that one. I am passionate about that one. I'm a yeah. numbers guy, as you know. I guess I'm just curious to see how it all unfolds, you know, at the at the beginning part of next season. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, there's going to be points in the in the season where there's going to be a live tour event. Okay. And the same that's going to intertwine with a PGA event or a DP World Tour event. You know, th there's gonna, there's gonna, it's gonna happen. You know, I could totally see Liv 
and Greg being a, being a snake and and scheduling something, um, you know, either the week prior to a major or the week after a major or something to that caliber. I'm curious to see what what happens moving forward. Just in all, just everything. You know what I mean? Like it's, I I, I don't know. It's just it's 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 kind of sick to my stomach to be honest with you about the whole thing because it's it's kind of ridiculous at the end of the day. But I, it's it, I don't know. How it cannot be a monopoly. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to to talk about it because it's like, I wish it just didn't happen, period. So our Twitter poll, by the way, our we did put a Twitter poll out there, boys. Our Twitter poll was PGA Tour and Liv. Who won in this scenario? Leave comments below, okay? 5%, and by the way, folks, if you're listening, this is still up for another day and a half. So just so 5% right now for the PGA Tour, 48% for Liv. 24% for the fans. 23% said it was not Greg Norman. I think Liv's gone, and I think Greg's gone. Like, the, we won't hear the name Liv six months down the road. That won't be part of the conversation. Um, because that was the bad apple in all of this. And I, and I think the the, the Prince, the, the Saudis understand that, that they were on the ropes, like you said. When so I think Greg's gone and, and gone. Rory say that they, they, they that Greg has to go. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You were saying they're, they're yes, they're on the ropes. And and then to Christian's point too, I cannot conceive how a schedule is going to be made with these three entities, how wh whatever it's going to be called, there's going to be remnants of live. Um the DP World Tour, how are you going to schedule this? How are you going to not cut a whole bunch of communities out of support that they've had for years through, through the tournaments on the PGA Tour? And you can't take that away from the PGA Tour. It gives away, two. what are they at, $2 billion in charitable giving? Three. Three billion. What's going to happen to those communities? Is that the money piece? That the Saudis are going to front that and take care of that for the feel good sports washing, we're not so bad type of situation. Right. I think that's to my point earlier. I think it's probably going to be some sort of blend of the PGA Tour will be the regular season. They're not going to call it live, but there'll be weird, crazy stuff in the fall. And the DP world does their thing. And it's going to shake up like that. Just to invite digress, digress for one second. As PGA members, our association, our PGA members in the field raise $3 billion every year. The PGA Tour in its entirety, since way back when, has raised $3 billion. Applaudable, but every, you know. Um, and as another level, in 1974, Dean Beeman went in as tour commissioner. The PGA Tour's assets at that time at their office in Washington, D.C., were a printer, a desk, and I think a copy machine. And Dean told me that. And now think about what the tour is today. Just think about it. 1974, they had a printer, a copier, and a desk in a Washington, D.C. small office. Now, Dean took them from nothing in station wagons to jets. Christian, I see you're chomping at the bit. No, I'm, my, my thing is, too, like, when the, going off of, like, because the whole point of, like, again, like, this is a big ordeal for the guys on tour that were trying to make a name for them, for themselves. What's going to happen to these guys too moving forward now that all of this merging is going on? I got, I got, I got a, a guy I know on tour right now who just made it. His name's Kevin Roy. What's going to happen to him? You know what I, I mean? Have, I have theories. I have theories. Nobody knows, so let me throw my theory out there. Right? Here's my theory. They're going to create the Super Tour. You're going to have a hundred players. Um, relegation is going to be in. in we, we talked about this before relegation. Andy, I think brought it up. Relegation is going to be a component of that, where if you're going to, let's say if you're in the top 75 or secure, the bottom 25 could go up, could go down, depending on how the, how things are playing out. That's almost going to be like to use a baseball comparison, the major league. I think that they're going to probably play. Uh, you're going to have maybe three events in Europe Somewhere, you know, Scotland's already won. You have the Open Championship, and maybe they throw another one in there someplace so that you could have a European swing like the Florida swing. You could have an Australian or a Southeast Asia swing. And I think that you're going to pick off just the, the majors, 
and everybody else is going to be part of the relegation down to Champions League, second tier, opportunity to play up, Houston, Valspar, <laughs> wherever else. This I, and and in in conjunction with all that is going to be team play. Bobby, oh, and what, go ahead. No, go go ahead, Kristen. Bobby, no, 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 no. I don't. What what you're saying, <laughs> Alan? Like what you're saying? Like I. It's it's literally live golf. What like that's what you're saying minus the Saudis backing it. If they do this super tour, and they have X amount of tournaments, and they have a team or a team atmosphere, yeah, that's literally yeah. that's literally they, what they do. Doing, they, so. They've already they, they've already said the team component is going to be a huge component of me move forward. That was in Jay Monahan's statement, I believe. So so Jay can go out and say all these hatred things. Rory can say all these hatred things, but then Rory's going to tee it up in these team events and these super tour, if it happens, down the road. Rory obviously is going to be there. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the you money. Know? Yeah. And what, what about Tiger and Rory? What about their entity with uh, tomorrow sports? What's going to yeah, happen but- with that? Greg Norman is sitting on his ass right now, enjoying a cocktail, loving Every second of this, as much as it is that he's a pain great pain. disruptor. Okay, I hate yeah. to, say it, but he's a mastermind behind this because this is the, he he did this. Okay, he I don't like the guy, but he did this. He caused this. He caused all of they this. Caused it, caused it. Yes, 20, 20. 30 years ago at Sherwood, he caused this. Yep. Yeah, you know, but none Christian. of this. What's up? What's up, Boston? Yeah. Bird, Bob? <laughs> What do you think about Newman? What do you think about for the next year or two or three, the JTs and the Roms and the Roys that stayed, they're gonna get an appearance fee to go to these tournaments as a payback. I think, well, okay, let's go, let's go down that road. That follow that golden yellow brick road of theirs. How I'm telling you right now, and and Again, we circulated this. I'm not going. I'm not going political. How about Trump with follow the money? Everybody else follow the money. He has, his his tweet popped back up today, right? Him, Phil Mickelson got two hundred million dollars in his bank or hundred million of it's in his bank account. Apparently, it was set up as a hundred million down payment, and then a third, a third, a third. Right? How? Come on. How how do you? How do you make Rory whole for being loyal? Sorry. Bill could lose that in a bender in a couple of weeks in Vegas. Bill's Bill could. Yes, it. he could. Bill's probably already lost it, if I'm being honest. So when well, Phil could use it just to pay off his others. I don't know. We don't yeah. know. Bill has to pay a fine to go play the players championship now, moving forward to come back on tour. He ain't gonna have that money from from the live anyways, because he probably lost it all. But that I think that's I think that is the biggest hurdle that Monahan has in front of him. How do you reward the loyalty that of who's been there and and, and slap the hands of those that that ab- that abandoned you? Right, and also you know I, I know it's been talked about for many many years. Uh, the potential now is probably reality of a tour union. Like collective yes. bargaining. Yes. There's, ar- there's already been talk of that. The tour players have already are already sport- sporting up that conversation, Bob. I believe it. Yeah. I think so. Now so it becomes like every other sport then, right? Basically. Yeah. Show me the except money. the Saudis. Except the Saudis are part of it too. That's the only difference. Brendan? I, I what's the, this what is, side of the what side of the argument in the art are you on? Does do, do you pay, pay big fines to those that left, or do you pay big appearance fees or some kind of something for for those that stayed? I I don't think in my forty almost forty eight years of being on this planet that I've ever been so conflicted about something in my entire life because there's so many moving parts to this. So so let me kind of condense this real quick. Everybody had a pro- not everybody, a majority of people had a problem with where the money's coming from. That was the big argument. And and I I have those same thoughts and those same feelings. And my mother, if she listens to this, is probably going to kill what I say next. But the reality is the Saudis have been involved in a lot of what we do as Americans from 
filling up at the pump to, you know, all kinds of things. So it's, it's not like major corporations within the United States are not having dealings with this, with Saudi Arabia and, and have not had them for decades. That's the reality. But the, the ties in the tie in with nine 11, the, the murder of the journalists, you know, their how they, how they, their, 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 how they treat women. Um, there, there's just so many things that are a negative from that standpoint. So we get, I get back to your point, Alan, how do we compensate these guys that stay loyal to the PGA tour by giving them the blood money, quote unquote, to, to rectify the situation that they were, that they chose not to take out of principle. Is that the fix? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Bobby? Well, I, you know, I was watching Roy's interview today. I don't believe his body language. I don't believe the tone of his voice. He was talking about, well, LIB, what did he say? LIB uh, it was, was not, I don't know. Basically, whatever he was talking about, I didn't believe a word of what he said. O only the truth that, you know, he, he learned about it last minute. Um, but he, oh, it was something about LIB is not running it anymore and, and the that uh, investment fund was just the money. Who, he who has the money runs the place. Yes. He who has the money runs it. Alan and I have been general try, manager. Try, Alan, try, to get, try to go into business with anybody. <laughs> Alan, Alan, you and I have been general managers at golf facilities. We have this stature. We're running the show. Yet he who has the money can overrule you and I, even if you and I say 1 million percent, we should do X, Y, Z. So, to me, the Saudi Arabia group is going to run the tour. They're going to run men's professional golf is the way I'm putting it. Yep. Kirsten, you've been strangely quiet for a few moments. It it comes a point where it's like, who do you reward? Who do you not reward? What is their – I don't believe in appearance fees personally because all these big events that these top players play in, they the, – they don't need an appearance fee to show up to the players championship. They don't need an appearance fee to show up to the majors as well as the other big events that happen in the, in the course of the season. But where do you give out that cutoff line on paying in, uh, the players for their loyalty or program, whatever the hell they call it. I just read something on Twitter where it says Jay Monahan says that Tiger and Rory are going to be um, paid in loyalty for, or, or whatever it was paid in loyalty for their service to the PGA tour. Yep. But where do you cut that off? Because as of right now, I can name 20 guys that play golf better than Tiger Woods. But since Tiger's name is Tiger, that's the reason. And I'm not taking anything credit away from Tiger. But I'm saying from a, from a player standpoint, the tour, as we've talked about it for years, right, it's in a great spot um, um, from, a, from, a, from a physical standpoint as well as a mental standpoint. It's, it's so difficult right now to win on tour because there's so much good talent. Where do you cut that point off? If you're Will Zalatoris, yeah, and you just walked away from, I don't know, pick a number, seventy million. But, but Will walked away from a hundred plus million dollars. But Will's also said numerous times in an interview that he doesn't play golf for the money, right? He plays golf to obviously win championships. If the P, if the U.S. Open was fifty thousand dollar purse, he would compete in it still, right? I'm still pissed off about Will Zalatoris' shoes. Don't misunderstand me. If I, but, but I think Will Zalatoris is a great example because I think Will yes. Zalatoris today is where Brooks Kepka was two years ago. 100%. Right. 100%. Which but... is, I'm injured. If somebody flashed 70 million in front of him, why is Anthony Kim not out on the PGA Tour anymore? Is it his wrist or is the $50 million Lloyds of London? I don't want to digress and get into a big cut, but I mean, Rom, oh, yeah. JT, Tiger, a billion. How do these guys get made whole, or how do the other guys get penalized? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm less about making people whole. I'm more about penalizing the other ones. That's my that that's my position. You know, there's been there's been appearance fees in the game of golf, professional golf, back to the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s. That's that was part of the deal at a lot of tournaments. Now the dollar figure was pretty low and those players were the head pros at different clubs. But in essence, 
there's there's a legitimacy about the parents' fees, pros get paid. And then also Alan and I are doing an exhibition match, wink, wink. And the winner gets 3,000, the loser gets 1,500. And on the first tee, Alan and I wink at each other and shake hands and who cares who wins? We're gonna split it all. So that stuff's been going around for a long, long time. And just as a FYI, historical facts. I love your story. <laughs> Where do you hear my ending? I've been, I've been building my ending all day. I'm thinking about this. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Brendan, what's it, uh, let's go back to that other topic because I actually want to I want to figure out what the, the landscape is going to look like going at, forward. What does the landscape look like going forward? Is it Super Tour, DP Tour, Southeast Asia Tour, Corn Ferry Tour is new, the new now double A or excuse me, now single A baseball? I mean, what? how does it all play out? Well, and I was even hearing now that there's going to be this influx of money um, about the image and likeness whole thing that's that's emerged the last couple of years with a lot of these amateur, you know, or or social media folks or NCAA players being compensated now. And um, because there's going to be this influx of money, I, again, I'll, I'll say what I said before, I do not see how this is all going to be put together within a whether it goes back to a calendar year or, or the wraparound season i just don't know how without hurting a lot of people um how this is ever going to work out and you know one point before i forget the pga of america is separate from the pga tour thank you public <laughs> service announcement god that drives me crazy <laughs> Christian, I'm going to take another. I'm going to. I'm going to spin this in a different direction. Although we could probably talk about this at length. And uh, well, I, before I do that, I I got to tell you, I think Phil did win social media with his little tweet the other night. Oh, just out here practicing in L.A. Anything going on? <laughs> Brooks's was good. Welfare check on. Oh Shirley. my God, that, that was, was hilarious. Good. <laughs> that was good. That was Funniest, I think, Brooks. Christian, I, I know you're passionate about this because you were passionate about it last July. How bad is this that it's going to take away from the U.S. Open? It, it's it's sickening to me. It's it and I it's so freaking sickening to me because it's the best tournament in my in opinion world. all year. Mm -hmm. It is the hardest golf tournament to play in all year. It is the most fun, in my opinion, to watch all year. And a great venue this year. A yep. phenomenal venue. I don't think under par is going to win, if I'm being honest. I think over par will win this 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 week. I could be totally wrong. However, here we are again. Every big freaking player that's going to go into the media, if it's Scotty, John, Phil, whoever the hell it is, this is going to be the topic of conversation, topic of conversation, and it's bullshit. Don't talk about it this week. Talk about it next week. Focus on the U.S. Open this week, and it's it's ridiculous. Talk about it this week. Don't talk about it next week, but media is going to be media. They're going to be asking the stupid questions all week to these players. And that's that. You know, those damn, those damn people that are writing articles all the time. Brendan, got any thoughts? <laughs> you notice how I didn't take that one job where I could get salacious. <laughs> Although I, I, now that I'm in retrospect, never mind. <laughs> But you know who's going to thrive from that this week or next week, though? All the live guys playing in it. The DJs, the Brooks, or maybe not Brooks so much. I'll be sitting there, told you so. Told you so. Exactly. Like, like I saw Taylor Gooch's Instagram post yesterday. He's sitting on a beach and whatever with live golf and shit. Like, dude, no offense, you suck. You're not good. Okay. For, like, you're not. Lee, good. Lee, West, Lee Westwood. I'm sorry to say it. He, Lee Westwood tweeted today from the, from the coast of Italy. Oh, here on vacay. Anything oh, going on? You. <laughs> Dude, you just stole. You just stole Phil's. Phil already tweeted that. Yeah, you can't, retweet, you can't retweet it. There's literally two people on live right now that actually have a chance of winning any type of major, and one just won at the PGA, and the other one is from Australia. The other, everybody else on that tour is irrelevant. Literally, they're irrelevant. They, they, they will never win another tournament. I don't think ever. Bryson's too much into his head. I watched him on CNN a couple of nights or last night or whatever, two nights ago. What a joke he is. First off, absolute just joke. I, Patrick Reed, he'll probably cheat his way into some type of other litigation on his name, and everybody else there can and they they don't have the money to pay back. They're fine. 
because they didn't get paid enough already to go there. $50 million to go to live, their fine is going to be $100 million. They don't have that in the bank. The Joaquin Neimans of the world, the put that quiet sign down. I'm heated. <laughs> uh, the, lean in, lean in. The Joaquin Neimans of the world, the freaking uh, whoever else is on the tour. I don't even know, honestly. I don't hey, even hey, Christian, you know what I think is going to happen? It's going to be like the, the good old days of the tour when there was a fine, when there was a reprimand of a tour player. It was behind closed doors. They never talked about it. The only major American sport that didn't talk about it Saudi Arabian money owns the tour now. They run it. They're going to let those guys go back in with a quote unquote fine. I bet it's 50,000 bucks because they're going to want them to be back there. Of course, they're going to want them to be back there. And, and at the end of the day, whatever fine is going to happen, the first person that's going to actually break their live contract is going to be Brooks Kepka. I, I'm a firm believer in that. He is yeah, going to be the first person to pay a fine to go yep. back on tour. I don't care. Who disagrees with that? Because it's the, it's the truth. Brooks misses the tour. I'm going to make a really crazy analogy here. So just bear with me on this one, okay? I can't wait. The Saudis can do whatever they want, to your point, Bobby. But they could also, they could make them pay up. So you, you, in, in Yes, they want them on there, but they could turn around and, and, and they could say to them, yeah, that contract you have, it doesn't mean shit. You're going to pay this fine or you're not going to play. You're going to continue or we, you're welcome to go continue to play and live. And maybe Greg's right. Maybe live does play for five thousand dollars on some uh, some obscure islands in the South Pacific or whatever the case may be. And here's my my comparison. Fox News fired Tucker Carlson. They got they're still paying the dude twenty five million dollars to sit on the sideline for eighteen months. Yeah, and they can look at everybody and go, "Thanks, Bill. You don't have to play again." So you're going to do what we say. To your point, it's all about the money. You got the you got the chatter. You make the rules. Well, I should say that the Cam Smiths, the Brooks, the, the DJs. They're going to want to see him on tour. The Pat Perez is, you know, give me a break. <laughs> Who? I'll see Pat Perez at the local casino with Phil Nichols and Campbell and their money away. I, saw, I mean, I saw Carlos Ortiz in a epic longest day of golf, uh, like five-hole playoff, and he actually made it, which was actually good theater, by the way. Not going to lie. Oh. But I'm just – all I'm saying is let's say that they all have – I don't know a, a hundred million in the bank. They could tell them that you're 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 gonna you're gonna give us back fifty million, and then you do either the fifty million to, it, as a as a fine for leaving the two, this new well. But then, <laughs> then I just thought of another extrapolation, which is they're not going back to the same entity. They're not going back to the PGA not tour not for profit. They're going to some new thing. Holy shit! This thing is going to get really complicated, Brennan. Good thing that the four mages are their own thing. Thank God. So at least a little bit of the history of the game will stay intact. I mean, this is going to have maybe more litigation, Christian, than than the previous litigation. Except it's going to be individuals going up against the Saudis this time. I, I, I just, I don't know anymore. I really don't. It's going to be very interesting, very confusing, very annoying moving forward on what is going to happen between these three tours. I, I don't, I still don't understand what Jay Monahan's thinking of when he, when he did this. Um, but I'm telling you what, I think Brooks winning the PGA had a big impact on this. Oh yeah. I truly think that, 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 that pissed off Jay tremendously that a live golfer won a PGA uh, a major for that matter it happens to be the pga championship thankfully the the block party was a little bit of a more PGA, spot PGA is not affiliated with the pga tour this has been a public <laughs> but 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 watching that and i think just like uh i don't know it's it's going to be very very annoying moving forward and um well i guess we'll just have to wait and see see what happens so <laughs> that looks like great <laughs> Bobby provide yes, some provide some uh calming influence over us from a historical perspective. Will it all work out? 
is Rory right that it's bigger than us that 10 years down the road, it's what's best for the game? Uh, geez, I don't know. I mean, As he said in his presser. It's a lot of privileged, high-profile athletes that are talented, going to make a lot more money like in any sport. So, you know, the the LeBron James, the Mike Trouts, the Wayne Gretzky's, the, the, the cream the cream that are always going to get that money, there's still kids playing hockey, still street hockey even, uh, playing be- pickup basketball, you know, playing a catch. Um, the, the root of the sport stays intact, but the other end, it does make you just want to cry sometimes. And so I was thinking about this, and, yeah, I've, been, I've grown up in the sport. So, you know, way back when you had to gut a perch a ball, and then the ball became uh, synthetic, and everybody said, well, the game's going to get too easy. And then when Byron Nelson – helped to bring in the metal shaft and the clubs. And he was playing well. He wins 11 straight events. And everybody said, well, the game's going to be too easy. And then you've got Ping, the Ping company, they're coming out with the perimeter waiting. You know, the game's going to be too easy. It's going to change. And you've got hard collar shirts to soft collar shirts. And what's going on with the game? And I remember watching or reading uh, PGA magazines from the 1920s that said the game's going down the the crapper because the game you're not wearing it's high in a shirt when you play and it's losing the gentleman aspect and when turf machines were getting so much more sophisticated and the turf conditions were allowing the scoring to get better a lot of people think that was a seismic event in the game of golf and then persimmon woods to metal woods and then september 1 1996 i remember my club in ocean city maryland went to soft spikes and everybody said that's going to change the game. Like my whole life, I, I love the history. I've been part of a change of the game. And so a lot of it was at the grassroots. This is on the other end. This is talking right. hundreds of millions of dollars to privileged a- athletes. It's an amazing day in the history of the game. I don't think it hurts the game to some degree for, the, like I said earlier, the Joe Golfer coming out. He's more, he's more worried about a fast car, cold beer, and that's about it having fun. And so all these events have happened in the game of golf that people said the game's changing, the game's going to get hurt. It never does. It keeps advancing. Lately, it was all about the golf ball, hitting it too far. The game's going to be healthy. The game's going to thrive, we hope, with PGA members and LPGA members doing all the grunt work at the grassroots. But this money grab at the far end, it's a weird day, that's for sure. Question to you, Bob, as an operator of golf course as well. And then I got one for Brennan, and then we'll head to the 18th green after that. Um, does this impact the, the the average golf course at all? I don't think so. I don't think it does either. Might help actually. Which which then yeah. leads which then leads the the question to you, Brennan, which is the governor, you know, just wanting to grow the game. Do people really like? Bobby, come on, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a played out thing. You said that last week. Um, but see, I'm I'm right there with Bobby. I mean, this is in and Alan, you're there with us too. This has been in your blood working in this game for a very long time, of course, on the different end. Um I hope the riff the ripple effects and people people have been taking that out of context, especially again, I'll mention my mother because <laughs> she's very, a very much a political person. Um, but I hope the ripple effects are positive. I said that on social for what I do in the game, what my interests are in the game, which is helping the regular person enjoy the game. So maybe the good that comes out of all this when the dust settles is that they're, this boom that we had from a very strange place, which was COVID just continues to move forward because of another very strange situation. That's my hopes. And my hope is that as we, we get here to the 18th green that our boy Christian lays some, some words at us, but before he does, I'm upset, not because of live and PGA tour. It's got me a little miffed. They're stealing the headlines from the shop right where right. our friends Alexa Panna and Samantha Wagner are teeing up this week. And that's got me pissed off. So, Christian, 18th yeah. green, final thoughts. 
Uh, final thoughts for me are uh, happy to be back first and foremost with the boys. I miss you guys. I've been traveling a lot for work lately, so I, I'm finally home here for a few, uh, for a long period of time. I'm hopefully very excited to see BE next month. We got to figure something out while I'm down in sunny Florida. Um, but please continue to uh, follow us on all social media. Now that we have our brand new uh, logo, our cooler logo, in my opinion, we all look like absolute studs on there, by the way, uh, courtesy of Mr. Alan DePeel and uh, and as well as Brandon Elliott and as well as Boston Bob. And where's Andy? I don't know where he is. Can't find him anywhere. Can't find He's him. Looking, anywhere. looking for yeah. Ogletree. Looking yeah. for Ogletree. Exactly what's going on. Maybe he'll be in the Super Tour one day. Um, but <laughs> continue, uh, please, again, to follow us on social media. We have a lot of great stuff planned uh, the rest of this year. And uh, that's my my final thought. Greg, you know. On that note, Christian, you ought to see the downloads this past week. I listened to the show. Good yeah, stuff. Great. Great Good stuff. stuff. And by the way, I changed I changed the intro again. You got to wait till you hear the intro. Well, you're going to have if you've listened this far, you've already heard the intro. But wait till you hear the intro this week because I got I pulled a cool one from Danny Noonan. Oh, I, I listened. I, I listened to one last week. There you go. Boston Great. Bob, lay it on me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm going to just follow up a little bit on uh, my boy Christian there that we do have a really stellar Stella. Uh, a wicked Stella lineup of some guests that we're looking to bring on. So the show's changing for the good and the response has been really wonderful. We've got some really, really neat things. And I don't know if we, I think we're suddenly in our groove that we want to be a spark of the industry to get some things talking about. And, you know, we, we want to shake things up. Uh, disruptor might not be the right word, but um, we want to get people thinking, thinking about good things and, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I think uh, I like the little adjustments we made, and we definitely miss our bandmate Andy. Uh, this would have been the the prototypical show that he wanted to be part of. You know, all that all that means is that next oh, week he's coming is. and loaded for bear. We're just gonna step aside next. And you week. know what? Every time he does, I'm hitting him with one of these. <laughs> it's a penalty. It's a fine he's paying. He's coming hard and fast next week. <laughs> Brennan, what you got? A uh, couple things. We'll have the video portions coming out soon. I'm working on a some fanciness uh, to get that out there on YouTube. Um, since golf has been overshadowed, some other great stories in golf. Real quick, Rose Zhang, she's going to be a oh. world beater. I mean, that young lady winning in her first event as a professional, fantastic. She may even win this week again too. Is she playing? She's playing this week, right? I believe she is, yeah. And I'll tell you what, the Bay Course is looking tight. That's yeah. it. If you it, honestly, when you guys, you, you guys gotta come up and hang out with me up in Joyce. I mean, we could have some fun playing there down there as well. Some other good, great venues. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a young man, Jaden Sung of California, thirteen year old that was in the mix for getting the a U.S. Open bid. He almost he almost pulled it off. He didn't have the greatest rounds, but uh, he was he was there at the final qualifier. So good good job, young man. And my lead into that, or my last thing, he was a winner of our swing contest, which is back in 2023. This is our 12th year of doing our little Linksters best Pee Wee golf swing in the world competition. We've had amazing judges over the years: Jack Nicholas multiple times, Annika Sorenstam, Gary Player. Um, a show way the list goes on and on. This year we have uh, Solheim Cup captain Stacy Lewis, um, our friend Alexa Pano, uh, Sam Ryder from the PGA Tour, uh, some really great teaching professionals, Michelle Reed, Zoe Allen, Tom Reed, uh, and we've got our friend Jason Hellman up in Canada, and one of PGA's favorite, Joe Hallett, will be one of our other judges so we're really looking forward to that registration is open online littlelinksters.com go up to the search of programs and look for peewee swing contest ages under three like one and a half year olds two year olds up to uh thir or 12 years old that's great stuff that's great stuff we'll put it up on uh, obviously we're gonna put up on all of our socials as well 
Brenda, the, the, my nickname for Joe Halleck is he was the director of instruction when I was at BJ Village. Joey yep. Bag of Donuts. Joey Bag of Donuts. I'll call him that next time. You call him <laughs> that. He's going to know where it came from. So you actually reminded me of something because, again, I was camped out watching the longest day of golf. And if you saw the uh, the playoff uh, with Michael Brennan, and I don't know if anybody caught this, four-person play, four for two, he is up. He's got two inches from the lip on this bunker shot. He's got to carry it like 30 yards. He hits this shot that goes 50 feet in the air and scampers up to like six feet. He makes the putt. Somebody, a couple other guys miss. And, and a recovery shot like that gets him into the L.A. next week, which was a it was a really great theater. But my true one is I'm going I'm stepping outside of golf. You know, I'm a hockey guy, Bobby. You're a hockey guy. Did anybody catch Samantha Rivera, reporter for in from out of Miami, out in L.A. or excuse me, out in Vegas? Vegas. And she basically um, a Vegas fan. While she's on air, tried to kind of basically physically accost her. She oh. jacked him up. I gotta see this. <laughs> she she could play. Him. She could play on the third line in some teams. <laughs> And she, her tweet was, listen, I don't give a damn what team you're rooting for. Get the hell out of my face when I'm working and respect what I'm doing my job. But excited to get back home to some classy Panthers fans. And that's how we make a fun Stanley Cup playoff. Christian, nice. I'd say you hit it long and straight, but you may not be able to see it up there in the smoke. Nothing? Okay, great. I'm hitting it short and crooked. <laughs> 